This is a thrill greater than any I've experienced. <laughs> <laughs> to grab a microphone and set it over there. Take the joy there. <laughs> Are we ready? Good morning and uh, thanks to every, everybody for joining us. This morning I'm particularly pleased to be joined by Bob Keeshan, who's known to millions as Captain Kangaroo and as a leading advocate for children. Also by Bob Chase, who's the Vice President of the National Education Association and by Barbara Toman, who is the president of the Connecticut chapter of the PTA. Today, we're here to talk about the nightmare before Christmas. Not the movie, but unfortunately, the violent video games. These violent video games may actually become the Cabbage Patch dolls of the 1993 holiday season, and that would be too bad. Cabbage Patch dolls never oozed blood and kids weren't taught to rip off their heads or tear out their hearts and spinal cords. But that is exactly the kind of gory violence that is found in some of the games that are on the market right now. We're not talking about Pac-Man or Space Invaders anymore. We're talking about video games that too often glorify violence and teach children to enjoy inflicting the most gruesome forms of cruelty imaginable. I'm convinced that few parents would buy these games for their kids if they really knew what was in them. But that's the problem. There is no effective way for them to know what every video game contains. Let me show you what I mean. What you're about to see, if you have not seen these already, are scenes from two of the most violent and realistic video games on the market today. First, we have one version of Mortal Kombat, which is a martial arts contest involving extremely realistic digitized characters. During the fight, blood splatters from the fighters' heads. When a player wins, literally in those terms, when a player wins, the death sequence begins. The player is instructed to finish, and I quote, his opponent, choosing a method of murder ranging from ripping a heart out to decapitating the opponent with the spinal cord attached. So this is a segment from Mortal Kombat. Again, at the end, that's the character pulling the heart out. That's the decapitation with the spinal cord. Okay, the second game is Night Trap. This game uh, is set actually in an estate which appears to be a sorority house. The object is to keep hooded men <coughs> from hanging the scantily clad young women who appear in this or drilling their necks with a tool designed to literally drain their blood. Night Trap, as you'll see, uses actual actors and actresses and achieves a startling and the uh, awful level of realism. Thank you. 
I'm sure uh, if you haven't seen those before, you're as startled as I was and, and as disgusted as I was when I first saw them. But uh, from all that I've learned since then, as shocking as these games are, they're probably just the beginning. With virtual reality here, these games, as one expert recently put it, don't hold a candle to what's coming. Already there are CD games that feature explicit images of women whom the player directs to uh, perform sexual acts. While made for adults, it is very easy for teenagers and children to gain access to such games. Now, I personally believe that these violent videos are outrageous and contribute to the unacceptable level of violence in our society. Personally, I wish the video game industry would just stop making them. If they don't, I really wish that we could ban them constitutionally. But at a minimum, assuming that we cannot take legal action to ban them outright, uh, the video game industry should learn a lesson from the folks in the comic book business, and I choose that standard because it may not seem to be an obvious or a high one, but they at least have successfully kept graphic and bloody violence and explicit sex out of most of their publications by adhering to an industry-wide code that prohibits such scenes. Until and unless that occurs, as both a parent and as a senator, what worries me is that I and every other parent have no clear way of knowing what a, what a video game has in it before we buy it. And even if we don't buy it, these games are very easy for kids to get, and the peer pressure is on for them to get them. They can go to the local video rental store. One video chain. The national video chain rents Mortal Kombat and similar games for about $4. Um, one of these stores told my staff when, when we called that unlike movies, they have no age restriction on video games. So that al although the manufacturer has a rating on this Mortal Kombat <coughs> video, which is that it should not be uh, purchased by, for use by uh, anyone under the age of 17, the, uh, the video store in the, in the rating here has no rating. It says N.A. on it. Uh, a young child, therefore, who cannot go into a video store and rent an R-rated movie can rent a sexually graphic or violent uh, video game. Now. Uh, does all this matter? I mean, isn't our society violent for other reasons? Well, the Surgeon General, the American Medical Association, the National Institutes of Mental Health, and many others have concluded that there is a link between television violence and aggressive behavior. And common sense suggests that the effect of violence or sexual images may be even greater with video games. Watching television is basically a passive exercise. Playing video, a video game, is active. Children are not just sitting back and watching. They are fully engaged in the violence when they play these video games. In fact, they help to make the violence happen, and they are rewarding, rewarded for being violent. Millions of children every day play video games, sometimes for hours at a stretch. One study found that 90% of seventh grade boys and two-thirds of seventh grade girls spend time playing video games. Two-thirds of children between the ages of six and 14 play video games, and nearly one in every three American homes has a video game system. So we are calling on the video game industry today to recognize its responsibility to the parents and children of this country. While some companies have made efforts individually. The result has been confusing and I think ineffective. 
So this holiday season, thousands of children may be unwrapping and playing Mortal Kombat or Night Trap, and their parents may never realize what they are using, that they are using a game which glorifies violence. That is why uh, I am introducing legislation co-sponsored by Senator Herb, Herb Cole of Wisconsin to ensure that parents have the information they need when they go out to buy a video game for their kids. The legislation will give the industry one year to come up with a credible, uniform system to warn parents about the contents of video games. That system could involve ratings, similar to those that exist for movies, or could simply be informative warning labels. But if the industry fails to act adequately within that year, an independent council created by the legislation would take over and do it for them. We're not calling here for censorship. Nothing in this legislation prevents the sale of these violent video games. Although, as I said before, I believe that the video game industry should stop making and selling this violent material as in fact at least one company appears to have done. But in terms of what we can constitutionally legislate, this bill simply calls on the video game industry to supply basic information to parents. We now require warning labels on toys that can potentially damage children's bodies. Why not do so on a toy that can damage their minds? Senator Cole, who is the chairman of the Judiciary's Committee, Judiciary Committee's Subcommittee on Juvenile Justice, and I as chairman of the uh, Government Affairs Subcommittee on Regulations and Information, will be holding a joint hearing on this issue next Thursday, December 9th. We're inviting industry representatives family advocates and experts. We expect to air all sides of this important issue. In the meantime, uh, I hope that parents will be aware and wary. When your kids ask you or Santa for a video game this holiday season, remember that some of these video games clearly do not promote peace on earth and goodwill towards men or women. I now would like to introduce Bob Keeshan, who I, I must say that I'm thrilled to have with us today and honored to, to have with us. Obviously known to generations of Americans as Captain Kangaroo, uh, and even to my generation, of course this was early in his life, as the original Clarabelle on the Howdy Doody show. Uh, for those who want to wait after the official conference, I'm prepared to sing the Howdy Doody song with, <laughs> with Bob. Uh, I asked Bob Keeshan to join us today because, as you know, he's been a tremendous advocate for America's kids. He's served at every level of education and has, in fact, received 15 honorary degrees for his work on behalf of children. The doors of Captain Kangaroo's treasure house were open for more than 35 years, educating and delighting millions of kids, some of whom have grown up and are in this room, I assume. Many years ago, uh, Bob Keeshan talked about violence on television, and he said, and I quote, violence is a part of life, and there's no getting away from it, but there is also gentleness in life, and this is what we have tried to stress on our shows. I think it has been proven that you can entertain without resorting to violence. So, and I'm continuing to quote Bob, I ruled that there will, would be no horror and no violence, no matter how innocently presented, any abundance of excitement is not good. Children can't be a, at a high pitch all the time. It's just not healthy, end quote. The Captain Kangaroo program was living proof that kids don't need violence to be entertained, to be educated, to be happy and to be fulfilled. Bob Keeshan, in his uh, years on television and his work since then, is really at the polar opposite of the junk that we have seen uh, on the screen here today. I am delighted that he's joined us and I'm very proud to introduce him to you now. Thank you, Senator Lieberman, very much. <coughs> for that kind and generous introduction. It's him, it's him, I can tell by the voice. Video games, you know, like their electronic cousin, television, favor the potential for heretofore unknown opportunities 
<coughs> for information, education, <coughs> and delightful entertainment. <coughs> As with television, video games are a technological tool which, when used appropriately, bring, bring great benefits to the user, not the least of which is <coughs> superior entertainment. The technology is to be encouraged because used appropriately, they can be a great tool for our young people. Video games have a tremendous intellectual and tremendous emotional uh, effect upon the, the user, principally because of one aspect of the technology which differentiates <coughs> this medium, video games, from television. <coughs> the need for the user to be an active participant, not merely a spectator, as with television. It is this interactive aspect of video games which carries the potential for harm to the user. Virtually every study of the viewing of television by children over the last 35 years, a spectator function, shows a causal link between the viewing of violence on television and aggressive behavior in young people. The user of video games is <coughs> not a participant in a vicarious experience, <coughs> but rather an active decision maker. Many manufacturers of the software for video games proudly point to the development <coughs> of the player's intellectual skills as a result of playing the game. These manufacturers should be proud <coughs> because it would have been that active player <coughs> uh, does develop certain skills in playing the various games. <coughs> the danger arises when the subject of the software is of a violent nature and the active participant is required to make decisions which incite violence in order to win. This is not a vicarious experience, but an active participation in violent acts. If television violence has <coughs> desensitized us, adults and children, to violence, video games built on violence-oriented software may carry that process several steps farther. As <coughs> television sometimes teaches young children that violence is an appropriate solution to problem solving in real life, Violence-based video games cause that less, take that lesson a step further. Violence <coughs> is the option that makes the points that wins the game, the video game or the game of life. A reasonable person will be concerned about the potential for harm in this process. What to do <coughs> about this certainly is, does not involve censorship or the curtailing of <coughs> commercial free speech although I am often very impressed when commercial free speech is insisted upon as a constitutional right, when almost never is the accompanying responsibility to that free speech cited. It would be hoped that software manufacturers would understand that their role is a great role in a nurturing society, and they would exercise that accompanying responsibility to commercial free speech. When all is said and done, it is the parent or the guardian who must be the final arbiter of what is appropriate for a child. They nurture the child in every other way and <clears throat> must consider the potential for emotional and intellectual damage to the child of violence-oriented video games. So I would ask parents to understand that much of this violence-oriented software should not be placed in the category of <coughs> harmless toys, but rather, like other, con uh, other constructive software, a teaching device. It is indeed a teaching device, and it teaches a lesson of violence. The lessons learned by a child as an active participation in violence-oriented video games will be lessons that the thinking parent would shun like a plague. Indeed, it could become a plague upon their house. For parents to Manufacturers have a responsibility to exercise, con uh, exercise consistent with their First Amendment rights. So do parents have a responsibility to make decisions in nurturing their child. We ask that parents be given the information 
that will make it possible for them to discharge that very considerable responsibility. Thanks. Thank you, Bob. Isn't it great to hear that voice? Uh, I'm delighted to have representatives of two organizations who obviously care deeply about our nation's children. First is the NEA, the National Education Association. We asked them if they were interested, and they are, of course, and to send someone over, and I'm delighted that they chose as their representative uh, Bob Chase, who's been vice president of the NEA since 1989 and happens to be a social studies teacher from Danbury, Connecticut. Thank you, Senator Lieberman, for the opportunity to participate in this important press conference. The 2.1 million members of the National Education Association are acutely aware of the problems caused by violence in our school and in our society. We see that violence in our schools every day, violence directed at students and violence directed even at teachers. Our members are concerned about violence and they have insisted that the NEA address this issue in our resolutions and programs. Our association-wide commitment to finding solutions to societal and school violence problems recently led us to establish an interdepartmental task force on violence. So the legislative proposal that Senator Lieberman is submitting will be very supportive to our efforts. But we certainly can't do it alone. Reducing violence among children must become the goal of every citizen, particularly every parent. The world of children has become increasingly violent. Just how much is dramatized by a recent report from the National Association of Children's Hospitals and related institutions. In 1991, more than 5,000 children under the age of 19 were killed by guns in the United States, almost 15 young people per day. In many cases, these children were innocent victims. Unfortunately, in other cases, they were callous perpetrators. But they were still children, children who weren't born with violent impulses but learn them. Video games that glorify violence are among their negative teachers. The video games are not just child's play. They shape our children's values, their sense of justice and compassion, and their overall worldview. Many studies, as has been mentioned, have established a link between passive television viewing and aggressive social behavior. Video games are anything but passive in the way they involve young people in brutal acts. In the world of today's video games, children are encouraged and even rewarded for committing electronic acts that are nothing short of heinous, sadistic, and barbaric. Yet these games are the recreation of millions of our children, children who are not only impressionable, but unable to cope with the perverse emotional states these games demand. The NEA realizes the importance of maintaining the First Amendment rights of all our citizens. And we actively seek to protect and preserve these rights. We do not want to see them abridged, nor do we want to see censorship imposed. It is our hope that America's video game companies will respond and act responsibly to curb this electronic violence. Senator Lieberman's proposed legislation offers a first step in addressing this issue. It is sensitive to our First Amendment concerns and gives the video game companies the opportunity to regulate themselves. Once again, thank you, Senator Lieberman. We applaud your efforts to deal with the issues so central to the future of America's children. Thank you, Bob. And uh, finally, Barbara Toman, representing the PTAs, is a uh, pharmacist, um, mother of three uh, from Trumbull, Connecticut, and is at this point the president of the Connecticut PTA. Good morning. The board of directors of the Parent Teacher Association of Connecticut represents the leadership body for the 56,000 members of our statewide organization. Connecticut PTA, as part of the 6.8 million member National Parent Teacher Association,
counts within its ranks parents, teachers, and community members whose primary concern is child and youth advocacy. As such, the Board of Directors of Connecticut PTA is concerned with the health, safety, and education of our children and youth. With resources from the National PTA, our leadership has studied the issue of violence in the media to which our children and youth are exposed. We feel it is time to investigate the potential effects which violence in the interactive world of video games may have on youth. The Connecticut PTA Board of Directors is aware of our constitutional right to freedom of speech as it applies to the media and the marketplace. However, we also know that with rights come responsibilities. Our students are taught this daily lesson by their teachers and parents. While cognizant of the right of video game manufacturers to market their product, the Board of Directors of Connecticut PTA encourages this same industry, many of whom we presume are parents themselves, to formulate a policy with regard to responsible behavior in the marketing of their products. Indeed, the responsibility for monitoring the activities of children and youth remains primarily with parents and designated caregivers. The leadership of Connecticut PTA is often questioned by its membership about products and activities which are available to our young people. As child and youth advocates, part of the mission of the Parent Teacher Association is to act as an information resource for parents and other agencies with similar concerns. It is for these reasons that the Board of Directors of the Parent Teacher Association of Connecticut has adopted the following position statement. That the Connecticut PTA Board of Directors inform its constituent bodies and the general community about concerns associated with violent behavior in many video games. And that the Connecticut PTA Board of Directors encourage its constituent bodies to communicate concerns to manufacturers of video games that promote violence. And that the Connecticut PTA Board of Directors encourage legislators to initiate and or support legislation to reduce video game violence. The Board of Directors of Connecticut PTA is pleased to collaborate with Senator Lieberman in this effort to have the video game industry provide guidance to adults concerned about the stimuli to which our youth are exposed. The increasing level of violence exhibited by our young people, both in and out of the classroom, is frightening. Parents and other adults who live and work with our youth are looking for answers. The, the video game industry may be able to be part of the answer if the legislative proposal brought forward today is successful. And I thank Senator Lieberman for being a forerunner in this uh, project. Thank you, Barbara. Now, we'd be glad to answer any questions that Senator anybody Senator Lieberman, during the crime bill debate, we were told that in uh, many parts of the country, crime is the number one concern of uh, people across America. And uh, as you said in your opening statement, there's been a demonstrated link between TV violence and violence on the streets. Right. Why not move to just ban these altogether? As I say, I wish we could, <clears throat> but uh, any, everyone I've talked to about that possibility has uh, told me that it will be unconstitutional. And so I think what we're trying to say here is it's time to draw a line. Look, the, uh, the technology that enables uh, companies to produce video games is, is fascinating and very exciting technology. And like everything else, it can be used for good or evil. Uh, a lot of the video games out are, uh, are fine and acceptable. What we're trying to say here is that we've got to draw some lines, and we hope that the companies themselves will draw some lines. One of the ma two major companies, in fact, has imposed some standards on itself. It has a version of Mortal Kombat out that doesn't, uh, this is Nintendo, that doesn't feature those death scenes at the end. Uh, Sega, which is the other major company, has a rating system that it, in fact, puts on the uh, packages in which it sells these videos, but it produces these two uh, excessively violent and sexually uh, graphic videos. So I hope that there's a, a, a market uprising here 
that convinces the video game industry that, that they can make their money without sending out this extreme junk. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I don't think we can prohibit them by law from doing so. Senator Gary, the rating service that you just described that Sega has adopted uh, as a uh, non-violent version of mortal whatever, is, is that good enough? Because that's all, I mean, essentially that's what your legislation would be. Yeah, well, two things. One, in fact, there's, here's the irony. Nintendo doesn't, and these are not the only two companies that are going to be more getting into this business. They happen to be the two largest. Nintendo doesn't have a rating system, but is a, it applies a, a code to itself, and it doesn't, in which it promises not to uh, present videos with excessive violence or, uh, or graphic sexual uh, scenes, and it appears to be living by that code. Um, Sega has a rating system, but in a sense, no self-restraint. It, uh, it, it, it produces the two videos that uh, you've seen here. Uh, we want to leave it to the industry in that first year after this bill is adopted, and hopefully earlier. I hope they'll act before we ever have to adopt the bill in a way that we find adequate to first limit what they're producing, uh, and secondly, uh, to apply a uniform rating system. These are two companies. They're the largest companies. There are others, however, in the business, and this business is going to expand and expand as we go on. And at a minimum, I think we need a nationally uniform sis rating system, the, uh, which will be applied to everybody. The Sega system is not a bad place to start, uh, so long as uh, it was not only on the outside uh, package, but on the video itself, uh, and so long as it's applied appropriately. This. Uh, Night Trap, I believe it was. Was it Night Trap or Mortal Kombat that first had the MA-13 on it? It was Night Trap. In other words, the original Sega rating said that yeah, if you were 13 or older, you could. You, it was okay to purchase that Night Trap scene, which is horrible. They raised it after some protest to 17, but it's still suspect. Yes. Question for Mr. Cushman. Yes. trying to first draw a line and call on the, the moral responsibility of the industry to draw a line themselves, and secondly, at least to say, as Bob said, to give parents enough information to know that when they buy this stuff, they may be exposing themselves, their kids to real junk. Is, is there a way to make 
Part of the problem is Yeah, right. Look, the, it's hard to control every measure of this, uh, particularly in a society that values uh, free speech and First <laughs> Amendment rights. Uh, I, I wish that we could, uh, uh, part of what I hope will happen uh, as part of this one year period in which the industry is working to develop standards is that they will also have standards and ratings that will be uh, applicable to the, to the public use of this material, including arcades. Uh, and malls. Uh, that's going to be harder to do uh, than trying to control what they put on the package. And first, first what they put in the package uh, on the video, and then what they put on the package. So uh, we're not going to be able to control it all, but we've got to we've got to try our best. Yes, the Consumer Product Safety Commission has where they <coughs> allow industry a period of time to prove that they can adopt voluntary standards before they come in hard with regulations. Again, we're particularly sensitive here, as outrageous as this junk is, because it is it implicates First Amendment values. Um, and we thought a year was a reasonable amount of time. I hope that um, we're going to find, in response to this initiative and other expressions of outrage at these videos, that the industry itself will control itself in a shorter period of time. And as I say, and again, I haven't looked at every Nintendo video, but they have adopted this code, and, and they, in the case of Mortal Kombat, have licensed a version of it that they have out that does not have these extreme violent death scenes at the end. So there's a certain amount of self-restraint. Well, let's talk about how the censorship affects the First Amendment. You're also talking about these licenses. Like Uh, I don't worry about it, and I don't think there's a conflict. Uh, uh, what I'm saying is that I, as a public official, all of us here that, that are representative of larger groups uh, are calling on the industry to self-regulate, to show some moral responsibility, to understand, as Bob said, Bob Fieschen said, that with rights come responsibilities. Uh, and I hope that parents will uh, use the power that they have in the marketplace to stop purchasing this stuff. And that, that's the message. But that's, all, that's quite short of passing a law that says uh, these videos are banned. I, I don't think we can constitutionally do that. Well, this, this, is, this is not different. In fact, Part of what we're trying to do here is to get the video game industry to do, for better or worse, what the movie industry has does, done with its rating system, what the comic book industry has done with its code or seal of approval, and uh, what may be coming in various forms through Congress respectful of the First Amendment with regard to uh, television violence. At this point, that's not one of the areas that we're looking at as far as boycotting um, any particular industry. Uh, our general pattern of behavior has been information, letting people know that they have the right to find out what's on the market, what's on that list that your child is asking for their birthday or for Hanukkah or for Christmas or for graduation, and, and just get the information out there so that parents can make the choice and they can be the censors for what's happening for their children. That's where the responsibility is. Would you identify in newsletters particular videotapes and companies that manufacture them? That might be possible. But to be able to list videotapes and say, you know, take a look at them um, and make the judgment for yourself. Just briefly, we have not talked about boycotting either.
but its own moral responsibility as it deals with these, these issues. I mean, you look at these videos and they're repulsive. They're absolutely repugnant and there's no redeeming value. You can't say that you should be selling materials that, that uh, glorify murder, that glorify decapitation and so on, and look upon that as entertainment or having some kind of value in educating young people. And any time people are involved in these type of things, it's a form of education. Certainly the preferable way would be for the industry to regulate itself, as other industries have done, and understand its moral responsibility in a society that has become increasingly violent. Mr. Keishan. Uh, yes, so, yes, you know, we respond to the industry to this. Pardon me. The industry said they're going to fight you on this, cooperate. Well, we'll see. We've invited uh, them into uh, the hearing next Thursday. And again, the two major players have these fascinatingly different uh, records here. Uh, Sega, which produced these two worst tapes, has a rating system. And they say they're already doing what we want them to do. Uh, Nintendo doesn't have a rating system, but they are exercising control, and, they, and their fear, and I, I'll let them express it, is that the rating system will attract uh, purchasers, children particularly, to the most violent tapes. We're, we're going to hear that out next week. But we're, we're, we have been in, we have, they know what we're doing, and we're, we're in conversation. I, I think you were next, then I'll come right back. Mr. Keishan, uh, given your long experience in uh, children's entertainment, could you describe your personal reaction when you first saw these tapes? Uh, disbelief, I guess. Uh, I, 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 look, I have, I have uh, crazy ideas myself. Every creative person has uh, weird ideas occasionally, but I, uh, and I know I have the right to have them. But I also know that I have a responsibility to my audience uh, not, to, uh, not to put all of those ideas into my work. So when I saw this particular, uh, it was Mortal Kombat that I saw, uh, I just could not believe uh, that anyone would go that far. Now, I'm not a naive person. I've been uh, in, in the, the television industry for 45 years, and I know how important the bottom line is in this and, and related industries. Uh, and, and the bottom line is driving this. There's no, no kinder way to put it. Uh, so I, was, I, I, I did find it uh, very difficult to believe that people would go that far for a dollar to put, uh, put this kind of material together in, a, in, a, in video software. Uh, I was shocked. And, and, and even more than that, as a child advocate, as, as many of you know, uh, uh, to the American Academy of Pediatrics and the National Association of Children's Hospitals, of which I'm a director and so on, I spent so much of my time in the last decade or so talking about the need for everybody in our society to be part of the nurturing system. Nurturing of children is not a responsibility only of parents or of grandparents. Uh, or of caregivers. The nurturing of children, if we are to survive as a society, uh, is the responsibility of everyone. There's a wonderful African proverb that's often quoted, it takes a village to raise a child, not just the immediate family, but everybody in the village. And all of us in this society are part of that village, including the uh, software manufacturers in this video industry. And somebody there, in some position, ought to be saying, this is not good for the future of our society. I have a responsibility to exercise here if I'm going to be part of the nurturing system, which I am. And that's what I hope uh, is the response that we get uh, from the industry, that they acknowledge that they're part of the, of the nurturing system in this nation and that they play their role in nurturing American children. Well, Senator Lieberman, if someone <coughs> says they already have this rating system and that's what you'd like them to do, or some sort of warning system, and you don't want to censor them, <coughs> Well, uh, I hope that uh, we can be part of uh, stimulating a, a stronger consumer reaction. I hope that if there's a uniform system of rating and it's appropriately applied, it's on the package and on the video itself, that, uh, that parents will get involved and respond and uh, send a, an economic message to Sega if the moral message doesn't work and to anybody else who's manufacturing this stuff that uh, it's irresponsible to do so. Maybe profitable, but it's irresponsible. Senator, do you expect um, retailers and tape rental places such as Blockbuster to charge people before they buy or rent these videos if you're <coughs> games? Or games well, or you know, if, if I, again, uh, maybe things have moved more quickly than they're aware of, but particularly, let's take Mortal Kombat, which does have a rating on the outside. If it says 
that uh, it shouldn't be used for anyone under the age of 17, then I, I would hope in the exercise of their own responsibility, just as they apply the, the uh, movie rating system, that they ought to uh, ask kids when they come in how old they are before they let a young child, as we know has happened, walk out with night trap or mortal combat. It's, it's just, again, it's uh, nothing we're going to legislate, but it's something that I'd hope these retailers uh, would do in the interest of uh, their community and their kids. What kind of support do you have for your legislation? Do you have a correspondence uh, it's, it's brand new, really. Uh, Senator Cole and I have talked about it because of his work on the uh, Judiciary Subcommittee on Juvenile Justice. Um, we, we now have a draft of the legislation or an outline of it, which we've distributed today. I'm now going <coughs> to circulate it to my uh, colleagues. So I, I can't tell you, but I'm optimistic that we're going to have uh, broad bipartisan support because of the obvious concern about violence in our society and because of uh, the outrageousness of, of these tapes, these videos. Thank you all. And thank you, Bob. Thank you.